Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Boy in Real Life. We're here at Tom Restaurant with some very important people for um, an event that's happening uh, today and tomorrow. Um, this is Chef Spike Madison. Hello. 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 At Ashley Lickens. Aloha. He's going to tell us a little bit more about the science behind all the stuff that we're going to talk about today, right? So, um, you're here for the Chefs Action Network, right? Yes. And uh, what is that all about? What brought you here? Uh, well, I, I just did my first boot camp uh, last year in San Francisco. Uh, Ed was a, a, an alumni. He was asked to come back and uh, kind of school us about his experiences and, uh, uh, you know, uh, how he was inspired. So uh, for me, it was uh, you know it was a great opportunity. You know, uh, as a chef, I work so much. Uh, you know, I got all the restaurants in DC, and we, we stay super busy. And um, there's always like moments where I want to get a little bit more involved in advocacy and and uh, be able to to you know help the causes that I'm I'm really into. Um, but then there's this point where you kind of get lost as a chef. You really don't know how. Uh, so the boot camp was great for me because it really kind of laid the foundation of how you could accomplish uh, a lot of the advocacy I want to do. It also gave me a really great network of chefs uh, and professionals where uh, you know it's kind of like the bat phone where I can call call them up and be like, I don't understand this part of this advocacy program or uh, people are asking me to do this. I don't know if I should. And, uh, they really kind of help you out and they kind of let you maneuver through uh, all the different opportunities that you have, and uh, pick the best one, the best ones. Um, so for me, it was like uh, really important. You know, I also think, you know, as chefs, we're, we're kind of the best advocates out there these days. Uh, people trust us because uh, we feed them every day. You know what I mean? So uh, more likely than not, uh, we're in a, we're in a great position to advocate uh, uh, for many things, and especially me, I'm in D.C., I'm on Capitol Hill, so I really enjoyed being thrown into the network where, you know, Ed can call me up any day he wants and be like, yo, Spike, I need some help on the Hill, or I need you to do this, or, you know, and uh, for me, I think that's a that's a great role I'd like to play, and um, I'm here in Hawaii just supporting uh, Ed and, and, uh, and everything that he's accomplishing here. Uh, I'm also enjoying some waves at the same time. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, for me, you know, I'm right at the beginning of, of my advocacy uh, uh, life. Uh, like I said, I just did the boot camp last year, and, and now I'm, I'm just continuing the network process. I, I came down here specifically to see, uh, you know, uh, kind of what Ed has accomplished uh, over the years and, and, uh, and how, he's, how he's, you know, the success of it, and, and that's what's really interesting to me right now. Cool. Uh, and you've been an advocate for quite a while. Well, like Spike fishes. mentioned, um, in, I mean, I think chefs in general, mm -hmm. and we're always tapped to do fundraisers, to, to, to make donations right. to different philanthropic causes. Um, it was in 2011 that I went to the chef's boot camp that really opened my eyes to the, the, the advocacy tool in our, in our toolkit. Um, I remember I was invited, there was about a dozen chefs, we were invited to Tennessee. We all walk into this room and we just look at each other like, what the heck are we doing? And um, it was a partnership between James Beard Foundation and Pew Charitable Trusts. And um, Pew was really active in limiting antibiotic use in food animals. So in, within the first half hour, we're in this room, they put up a, tw a tweet on the board and said, okay, everyone, take out your phones tweet this tweet and it says something about antibiotic use in animals must be stopped, hashtag blah da da, blah, hashtag blah da da, and they said, we all did it, put away our phones, didn't think much of it. Three hours later, came back from lunch and they put the same tweet up and said, just for your information, collectively the 12 of you have about 200,000 followers, in the last three hours, three million people have seen, have read that tweet through tweets and retweets, okay. and all of our jaws just dropped. And we said, and, and they said, that's why you're here. You, you, you all have a voice. People listen to you. Like Spike said, um, I think the app, something like you ask American public how much they trust business, and it's less than 40% trust business. But then you break it down. You say, how many of you trust the food business? And it's over 70%. So I think, like you said, because we're feeding people every day, I mean, you're in, they, they gotta trust me, right? Pick my nose. <laughs> they trust me. Yeah, yeah. It's protein, man. <laughs> Come to town, restaurant. It's really yummy. 
Mortalities get down. Oh, my God. Um. With that, <laughs> so, and so you're participating in this forum. Well, actually, it's the North Shore Food Summit, which okay. is, is an entirely, I mean, we're just one part of this, this festival that takes place on the North Shore today and tomorrow. Um, this is the second year. It's really about, this year is about going back to a place of ancestral abundance. The North Shore of Hawaii used to feed the majority of Oahu Island, as well as um, the state. And um, now, 200 years later, it, it's, it's not doing that. So... Um, they have invited Michelle Nishan, who's a James Beard winning chef, who actually founded Wholesome Wave, which is a nonprofit um, out of the East Coast, to come and be the keynote speaker. He's also um, kind of the, the the brainchild, or Chef's Action Network is kind of the brainchild. Is um, he's the one that found had the idea, put it together, and has been at every boot camp ever since the first one. Um, so um, anyone gets a chance to go out to listen to him speak tomorrow, it's like you're listening to Gandhi. Yeah, wow. it's intense. He's, he's a badass. <laughs> really? Yeah. They just finished a boot camp too, just recently, just a couple days ago. I think they just uh, they just did one, and it's cool because I, I've recommended a couple friends to go, and one of my good friends from DC, another one of my chefs, is there and doing it and going through the whole experience. He's been emailing me and texting me. He's like, man, thank you so much. This is like the best experience, and I think that's kind of what. Is so special about this the, the Chef Action Network is that you know as the years go on you're just gonna have these network of chefs it's only gonna grow stronger you know and, and you're, we're only gonna accomplish more advocacy and we're gonna start to really implement some change that we really want to see happen so to me that's kind of like the exciting part of it and um, I think for Hawaii it matters yeah I mean, we import and, and who are you <laughs> My name is Ashley, and I'm not a chef. <laughs> Actually, Ed and I were on a panel together in 2010, and I was tasked to talk about policy, and he was tasked to talk about food. And we, like, talked story before. I'm like, what are you going to do? Don't do a PowerPoint. He shows up with bags of greens and, like, lobs them into the audience. Oh, my God. <laughs> And then I had to go up there and be like, <clears throat> and you're just like, no mm. policy. No. Isn't it oh. Oh. What kind um, of greens were you throwing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Organic, <laughs> locally <laughs> grown. <laughs> but anyway, I think that Sticky. Sticky. for Hawaii, our food system is at a turning point. Um, we real we import upwards of 85 percent of our food. Um, an increasing amount of our agricultural land is lying fallow without farmers to work for it. Um, and chefs really have an important role to play in reconnecting people, not only with that food, but the land and the labor that grows it. And I think that Ed has been a really important leader for that movement in other capacities as on a board or you know, serving as a volunteer or raising money. But now, I think through Chefs Action Network and the formation of Hawaii Chefs Action Network, we're going to sort of see this space created where Ed's advocacy can grow more advocates in different restaurants so that we can start to make those big structural changes that only policy can help us make, right? Our local schools cannot procure a lot of farm, that, uh, food that's grown on local farms. That's a policy change. It doesn't matter how much parents want to feed their kids local food. They can't. There are regulations in place that prevent that. Right. And so chefs can play a really, really critical role in politicizing and changing some of those structural barriers so that we can see change on a sort of systematic level. And I think that's what's really exciting because we're already it's just these barriers are, are in our way, and I think we're all poised now to remove those barriers. Okay. Well, I just have a couple more questions, one, and they're both related. One is, how can people get involved with this event on the North Shore mm. for today and tomorrow, and how can they get involved with the Chef Bastion at work on an ongoing basis? And can it be anybody? Does it have to just be people in the restaurant industry, just people interested? I feel, I feel like... You know, on behalf on how people can get involved, I feel that there, you know, not only Hawaii or DC, everywhere, there in every city, there's something going on in, in, in your local community uh, where you know they're trying to improve food policy or advocate or, or reform the way kids eat in school. Um, you know, for instance, for me, before even kind of joining the James Beard Foundation, I would go plant rooftop gardens in schools, and to me, like the huge 
huge component of it was education. I felt the, the more I went to visit these schools and talk with these parents and these children, the more I started figuring out, well, wow, like it's, it's not like they don't have a willingness to do it. It's yeah. just that they don't understand it and they're, they're not educated enough on this this part of it where, uh, you know, when you kind of go in there and you, you kind of educate them where food comes from and like, this is not the way you're supposed to do it. This is the way. Uh, I, I think, you know, I think that's like a really important part. So just getting people just to go out in their local communities and help out uh, for sure as far as the North Shore Summit uh, it's open to anybody yeah really? right? um, you can register day of um, so it starts tomorrow at Waimea Valley there's gonna be a series of field trips that plug people into local food and farming projects along the North Shore and then on Friday there's an amazing slate of panels um, from chefs to health advocates to farmers to local organizations and it ends with a Palpana. So anybody can go, hope to come. Okay, cool. Okay, so if you're interested in attending, click the link below and um, you can get more information on it or you can read all of this text. Right here. <laughs> and, um, and hope to see you there at the North Shore. If not, um, check out Ed at Town. Maybe he can ask you your questions on how to get involved in other things in your community. And Sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> at the very least, eat at town. Yeah. And then eat at any of your restaurants right. on the yes. East Coast. Yes, we the pizza. We the pizza. We, we the, the pizza. pizza. <laughs> and, and if you're a town, recommend this table right here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Hello.